Hello, coming to you live from uh, TechEd Europe 2012, sitting with uh, world-renowned author from Microsoft Press, Owen Thomas, live. Uh, Owen, how are you doing? I'm doing gr good, mate. I don't know about the world-renowned, but I guess I'm in another country, and if well, they know you in another country, you're internationally I, famous. I, I'm not sure if there's no, somebody that doesn't know who you are. Well, anybody in IT, I mean, they use your books. Uh, I know you're in the Netherlands. They use your books um, quite well to prepare for exams. Oh, that's good. And you've written, I don't know how many. 27 in total, 25 for Microsoft Press. So you can list them all by name and number? I so. could, but it would take a while. <laughs> but um, I've gone through a lot of your books. I've used them to prepare for exams for myself. And um, you're here as speaker? Yes, so I, I'm doing, uh, this year I've done... Microsoft Management Summit, and yeah. I've done uh, TechEd in the United States, yeah. and then TechEd here in uh, Europe, and I'll probably be going to do TechEd in Australia, maybe TechEd in New Zealand, if I uh, if I get a gig. Uh, so you're always busy flying off somewhere? It seems to be that way, yeah. Service. So um, I seem to be flying a lot around, and unfortunately Australia's a great place to live, but it's a long way from anywhere on an aeroplane. Yep, we know that. Yes. We know that. I'm, I'm originally from South Africa, and that's a way away as well. Yeah. Coming back to uh, Tech at Europe, you dated, did a session? Today? Yes, I've just done a session uh, today at lunchtime. Yeah. Yep. So uh, could that, you tell us a little bit about it? So I know it has to do with Azure and. Uh, no, no, actually, oh, it's private cloud. In the cloud. So it's private, private cloud. So it's mostly for people who are dealing with uh, stuff on their premises. And it's uh, self service backup and recovery. And we, 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 we called it private cloud yeah. self service backup and recovery. But it would work normally without a, a private cloud environment. But the idea is that in IT now, we're allowing people to go out and deploy their own yep. stuff in the, in the private cloud. And that's great, except for when someone deploys a, a workload that's important, yep. they've got to have some way of ensuring that it's backed up. And yep. you've got to have some intelligent way of determining whether or not a, lo a load needs to be backed up. Yep. So our session was about building a portal that people could go and visit and then request to put into protection a particular workload. Yeah. Okay. Well, with private cloud, it's going to be a, a big thing. You know, Microsoft selling yes, it off. Yes, well, Microsoft certainly pushing in that pushing. direction. Um, private cloud doesn't work for everybody. It works for organisations no, for sure. that are over yeah. a particular size. Uh, whereas in, I don't know about it, the Netherlands, but yeah. in Australia, there's only a certain number of organisations that are big enough for it to make sense for to have a private cloud deployment. Uh, most of them, you know, I think the figure's somewhere around 500, 600 servers before it makes sense to, to move to a fully automated private cloud infrastructure. And below that, it may or may not make sense to have that level of automation. Okay. But automation's always good to have because yeah. every minute you spend building automation is yeah. tens of hours that you save uh, not having to repeat those tasks. I hear from a lot of businesses and guys out there that say, yeah, but I've got snapshots. No, of everything. Well, now we know snapshots aren't meant for backups. No, they're not. Okay, so a snapshot but sits on the same hard drive yeah. that your virtual machine sits on in a private cloud sure. environment, which is great unless you lose the hard drive. Now, even when we've got super redundant storage, storage yeah. there is stuff like malware, there are weird errors, yeah. data errors. I mean, the new VHDX format in Server 2012 yeah. is designed to minimise the how corrupt uh, a virtual machine, virtual machine hard disk will get. Yeah, yeah, in the event of unusual failures. So just because you've got um, snapshots doesn't mean that something can't happen to those snapshots. Sometimes they're not, in, yeah. they're not consistent. If you've got a parent hard disk further mm -hmm. up the track from sure. the snapshot and that gets corrupted, you've lost your whole chain of yeah, snapshots. Yeah, your whole chain is gone. Yeah, yeah. so um, data protection is still as critically important today as it was 10, 20 years ago. And with companies moving to the private cloud, what do you see? Do you see people using uh, things like DPM? Well, DPM's your, or best, DPM's your best of breed for a Microsoft workload. It's designed by Microsoft yeah. to back up Microsoft stuff. Now, in a private cloud environment where you're running predominantly on Microsoft technologies, yeah. that's a perfect solution. If you're running a more heterogeneous environment, yeah. uh, if you're running Linux servers, you're running sure. something else, it may not be uh, exactly what you need. And then maybe somebody would be looking at Veeam. Something like that, yep. Because I've run into a bunch of guys here. Um, they came the other day and gave a bit of a presentation with their product as well. Yep. And 
they also aligned with this whole new private cloud in offering their services where they say they have a better yeah. uh, backup? Well, the, the, the understanding you take into say, data protection manager is you get data protection manager as part of the system centre yeah. suite. Now, you can, it really comes down to what you want to do and what you want to mm. pay for. Um, for example, DPM does uh, backup snapshots every 15 minutes. Yeah. For a lot of workloads, that's fine. But there are s some people out there with SQL work workloads mm -hmm. that need to be able to roll back to the last transaction. Yeah. Now, DPM, in some situations, is not going to allow you to do mm -hmm. that. But there's vendors out there that do. However, those yeah. vendors' products cost correspondingly more. And you've got to make that's a decision... True how much is worth losing, losing. 15 minutes of data worth? In some cases, 15 minutes of data, that's fine. We can cover that. Sure. That's only going to cost a few hundred bucks. There's some situations where it's going to cost tens of thousands. And in those cases, that's where you're looking at it making sense to, no. to get a third party's product, which yeah. may be more expensive, more expensive to license. licensing. But gives yeah. you that recoverability back to that point in time. So you make a choice. You've got DPM, great for Microsoft workloads, yeah. gives you a recoverability up to 15 minutes. However, you might need more frequently than that, and that's when you go out into the partner mm. ecosystem and then you look at a product that might give you a, a better thing, but you'll be paying more for it. Now that's true, that's true. Getting back to some of your books, are there any new books that you're working on now? Okay, I'm lately? always working on books. So you, I heard you at the party the other day say, well, you've still got to go back to the hotel and do some writing. Yes, so I've just finished one uh, that's going to be published in the next week or two on oh, SQL no. Server 2012. Okay. I'm writing one on Windows Great. Server 2012, and then probably towards the end of the year, I'll probably write something on the new version of Exchange. When that Are you doing any book signings? At I'm not at this ticket. I did some in Orlando, but yeah. I... I kind of missed the opportunity to set one up. Oh, uh, the timing, yeah. not interested. Well, it was very difficult to know when I was free and when they were free and just sort of, there was so much to deal with in terms of organising every aspect of a trip around the world that uh, I didn't have time to sort of settle down and do that. How much time goes into a book? So a book can take you three or four months to write, three or four months. but it depends on your ability to write. Yeah. To write a book, you really need to be able to do sort of 15, 20,000 words yeah. a week reliably at a good level. If you can't do that, it's going to take you a lot I, longer. I have a problem maintaining a blog. Yes. So, uh, well, it, and it's a very different type of writing. So yeah. there's people that can sure. write 3,000 words, fine, but you give them a 15,000 word chapter yeah. and they can get to about six or seven and then they kind of lose, yeah. lose what, what it is. So it's being able to write at that level. Yeah. And the only way you get there is by practicing, by starting off at the 3,000 word level, going to five, yeah. going to 10, and being able to be consistently good across uh, that level and consistently structured because you don't want to sort of lose the yeah. plot halfway through a chapter. Now, there's one question I've always wanted to ask you, and I'm sure a lot of people wanted to know as well. Have you written the exams for all the books that no. you've written? Uh, no. So the written? way it works is that you actually have to be, for legal reasons, quite partitioned from yeah. the exam process. So okay. the guys that write, if you write an exam for Microsoft, yeah. you are actually restricted, contractually restricted from writing exam preparation materials. Oh, so you yes. can't go in and write the exam yes. and then come back and write exam prep materials. Yeah. If you, however, and you can't go and teach related to the exam. So you're an MCT. Yeah. Um, you, can't, you can't go and teach a course related to that exam mm. if you've worked on the exam content. No, that's, I'm aware of that. And that was explained to me earlier. Yeah. In the week as well. Yeah. So there, no. Yeah. So there's a limitation, and in yeah. terms of uh, you know the restrictions on you, it, it's actually better to not go and write an exam because you can go out and write yeah. books, you can go out and write practice sure. test questions, you go out and teach, and just make your own. Yeah. Exam it's, tests. It, yes, exactly. Yeah. So it, it's it's fine. So so no, I've never actually written um, okay, great, life questions. Great. I've That's taken great. a lot of them. Though. <laughs> oh, nice. Because I know uh, you've written books from Windows Seven. To exchange, yeah, Windows. So, uh, so Windows server. Client and Server, Exchange and SQL. Uh, my 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 primary focus yeah. is in certification. I would write System Center if there was books around yeah. System Center certification, but unfortunately, there's just not a big enough market for it. I've I've noticed instead of Microsoft Press, there seems to be a lot of uh, Cybex so and, <laughs> and other, uh, you know. Um, yeah, there's competing. Um, competing. Uh, yeah, there's A Press com is here as well. Uh, O'Reilly. Yeah, Oh, well, O'Reilly is Microsoft Press now. Yeah, so well, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So, but no, there's other publishers that do it. But certification is a, a, a particular market, uh, and there are other publishers that come in for the more popular exams. Okay. Do you have any 
anything else lined up your ticket this week? No, I'm actually finally finished. I've got a few uh, sessions by friends to go and see, uh, yeah. which is nice because often you come to these events if you're a speaker and you're so concerned about getting your session right that you actually don't actually go are, and get to enjoy Are there any others. sessions that you prefer or like or that you're planning on seeing? Uh, um, well, I'm going to see uh, a guy named Mike Ressler do uh, a, a session yeah. on backup in uh, DPM 2012 yeah. Service Pack 1. Uh, nice. And Mike's a great speaker, so I'm yeah. looking forward to that. Okay, great. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Adam. No, you're a busy guy, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again whenever you're in Amsterdam. Okay, fantastic. And, well, uh, thank you. I very much I, enjoyed I coming to Europe. I hope to make Europe. it to ticket in uh, Australia someday. So, yes, no, well, it's a, it's a long way away, but it's on, in a nice location. Great stuff. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.